Sentry mode activated. Target acquired. Hey there, hunters, and welcome back to the Gunners Guild. Like, for reals this time, we're actually going to be talking about gunner stuff in a real setting in a new game. It's kind of odd, right? Uh, well, anyway, obviously we're going to be talking about the bow. While the meta is not really set in stone right now, I'm sure things will change in the next months when we get our first batch of DLC monsters and stuff, we can still go over bow and its current state and kind of how we're playing it right now. And before I dive into this, I do want to say thanks to all the people on the No Gods, No Kings Discord for all the help in any way, really calculations, data mines, mods, just playing bow, some feedback, it's all really helpful. And special thanks to Elp, Titus, Arati, and of course Papa Jin. So as we start, let's first briefly discuss the arrow shot patterns, as they are highly important to bow, and at the same time, they don't matter all that much anymore. Because thankfully, most of the bows actually have acceptable bow patterns where their last two charges are the same type and we can be using those without any worries about range changes or stuff like that. Seems silly, but I was really worried about the shot patterns and thankfully that's gone. So anyway, about the shot patterns. Here are the motion values for the relevant shots and they're all pretty similar. They work like you'd expect them to work. Normals fire a little cluster of arrows, making them consistent, but cap out at four arrows. Spread shoot five on ranks three and higher, but they fan out really far, like further than world far, making them less likely to land all in the same spot. And they have more limited range. And piercing are long range and can hit up to five times, but obviously monster weak spots change as you pierce, making their damage drop off a bit. Now without getting too much into the shots, because like I said, they're not super important anymore because they're so like equal at this point, uh, just be mindful of what you're using. Just make sure you know what distances you need to be in. Now, the last thing I want to say is that there's no real best shot pattern. And since we don't have bows for every element and every pattern, we're just going to use what's best for the situation. Now leading into that, let's talk about the bow stats, what we're looking for, and what are our current best bows. First is that yes, bow is still an elemental weapon. Raw bows aren't exactly terrible right now, but they're not really going to be relevant until we can actually finish Mango's bow or get some really good raw boosting skills to stack. Elemental bow is easy to scale right now because we don't have many slots on our armors and there's not much else to do with level 1 slots besides fill in elemental decos, so that's great. But since elemental attack skill got nerfed, I feel like this is just a short term solution. And there's some other things that I don't really want to mention, but we're elemental bow for now. So we want the bow with the best element. And since the shot pattern really doesn't matter, we just want to make sure we have decent charge levels like four and five are ideal. But we do use three sets sometimes. The arc shot doesn't matter anymore, since the only one we're actually considering was affinity arc shot. But we now know that affinity arc shot lasts only 10 seconds in the base game. So yeah, we're like not going to bother using that ever. 10 seconds is like a non buff. Obviously for coatings, we want power coats. That's the only thing that's like mandatory. Close range plus is a big fat meme. The damage goes from like a 1.18 modifier to like a 1.2. It's a joke. Don't worry about close range plus coats. Now, the last thing you need to consider for a bow is the rampage skill, because there is one gem in there, and that is elemental exploit. This is a new skill that increases the elemental damage you deal by 30% if you hit a monster's elemental zone of 25 or higher. It's really fucking nasty. Basically, all the bows that have this are usable and are the meta bows. Anyway, enough about what to look for. Let's actually just talk about the best bows right now. For fire, we have actually a few options. Paper Math says Rathalos bow is the best because that has decent fire and raw, spread three, which is still five arrows, and elemental exploit, which just makes it hit like a truck. Now, personally, I don't like spread and rise due to how wide it actually shoots, but I'll get to that in just a little bit. You can also use the Rachna Kadaki bow, which is a ton of element and great slots, and it's a pierce bow. I do actually like this bow for boss kebab, but I'm not exactly sure what I'd use this on uh, besides him. And of course, if you don't like spreads or pierce, you can always just make a rampage bow. Rampage bows end up being pretty close to the top tier on bows currently. You can freely change around their shot pattern to suit whatever you want, though, which is really cool. For water, there are two options. A Maldrin's bow has a large amount of water, I think it's like 50 plus, and elemental exploit, but unfortunately is locked to charge level 3 only, and has no power codes. It's still definitely strong, but the lack of codes and not being able to charge 4 does kind of hurt its damage. Still though, worth making. The other option is to just make a Rampage Water Bow. It's still better than Muse's bow. Now for the most part, I prefer a Maldron's bow, but I'll get into why I don't really use it in a little bit. 
For Thunder, we only have one option. It's Toby Kodachi, just like Base Game World. The kicker is, it's not our default Thunder Bow just because every other Thunder Bow is trash. It actually has good stats this time around. It's solid across the board, and there's no real reason to use any other Thunder Bow. Ice Bow, again, just one option, which is the Ice Bow. That's it, it's Ice Tree Bow, just Ice Bow. And this thing has only rapid threes, meaning it only shoots three arrows instead of four or five but it has a fat 61 ice when you have full ice element on it. Like 61 ice is G rank levels of element. And plus it has elemental exploit because why the fuck not? This thing slaps super hard. Literally if this thing had rapid four or rapid five, this would be as strong as our iceborne bows. Now for dragon, again, two options, but they're pretty much the same. You can run a Bushi's bow for rapids or you can run rampage with dragon element. Abushi is slightly better as a rapid bow, but the rampage can be used as a pierce or spread bow instead, depending on your needs and what monster you're fighting. So I'd make both just in case. I mean, you might as well because you have to get Abushi parts and rampage anyway, so you're going to have the parts, so just knock them out at the same time. Now lastly for raw bows, if you're going to make one, make the mango bow. Don't use it in endgame, it's serviceable through like low rank and getting actual like just familiar with bow until you can make all your elemental stuff. But you should replace it ASAP. It might be better later on when we can finish Mango's weapons and actually get raw skills, but for now, don't bother using it in the endgame. Okay, so with the bows out of the way, let's talk about armor skills and sets. Now our main priority for bows is obviously Bow Charge Plus, which grants you your charge 4. This is mandatory. If you're gonna play bow, you have to use this. Don't be like, oh I don't want the DPS or I don't really care. Just stop playing bow. Unfortunately, there is only one item in the whole game that has it, and that's the Mighty Bow Feather from the arena. You will need to do the Baryoth and the Rajang Arena quest to get the coins to make it, but that's about it. It's super easy. Unfortunately, because Mighty Bow is not on a charm or a decoration, all bows are locked to using this in their head slot for the foreseeable future, so thanks Capcom. Now after that, you have some skill priorities. Your shot type up should always be your number one priority. It's a really easy way to get your flat 20% more damage. Unfortunately, this is not a decoration anymore either, so you're, it's going to be a little hard to get in. The Vike armor, which is fish armor from the Argozi, has normal two up on the gloves and one on the waist, which is great for rapid bows. The Rachna Kadaki armor has spread up, and unfortunately, pierce up is going to be hard to come by, which is why I don't really use pierce bows. Seashell armor has pierce up, but it's like one per piece, so using three of your four available armor slots just on pierce up is kind of jank. The Red Uplos helmet is great. It's got Pierce up too, but because we have to use our helmet for Mighty Bow Feather, that's not really going to be available for us. That's more of a bowgun helmet. So next is your elemental damage up skills. That's an easy one. You can just make all those decorations and put them in all your level 1 slots. You don't really have anything else to put in level 1s anyways, so just get those out of the way. Then you need to work on your stamina management, because Bow eats way more stamina in Rise than it does in World. Good news is that we have some great options already. The Rachna Kadaki legs have Con 2 Stam Surge 2, which is basically huge. This piece of gear alone is all you really need, assuming that you're drinking dash juices. But the Rachna Kadaki gloves also have Con 2 and Stam Surge 1 if you want, and that's basically Con 4, Stam Surge 3, you're done. We don't need dash juices, you're fine. The Lagambi waist also has Con 2 and an extra level 2 slot in case you need it, but I haven't really found a use for that waist yet. Everything else after that is just filler. Weakness exploit is great if you can get it, and there are some options. The Scalda or Spio armor, which is from the Argozi from getting the Toxic Kimura bugs, has Weakness Exploit 2 on it, but no slots. You can complete this Weakness Exploit with the Zenogre chest piece, which has Weakness Exploit 1. We don't really want to run Crit Element anymore, because it's nerfed into Oblivion. Now in World, each weapon had a different modifier for Elemental Crit. Bow was like a 35% more damage on Elemental Crits. But here in Rise, it's all the same. It's three points for 15% across the board. And with our element usually being around the 20 to 40 range, we're only really going to get about four to six element, which isn't that much. Plus, that's only on crits, and we're not stacking crit anymore either, because we really can't since critical eyes are level two decos now. Crit eyes and attack boosts are worth gemming into your level two slots, or you can use evade extender, stamina search, stuff like that. But there's not really many things you can fit in right now. Crit boost isn't going to be a thing we're going to put on bows right now. It's just too expensive, and since we're all elemental based, it's not going to help a whole lot, especially when most of our sets aren't going to be running you know, any more than 50% affinity anyway. So don't worry about crit boost. 
So without any charms or decorations, our sets are gonna look kinda like this. Then you're gonna need to gem in your elemental decorations and fill in what's ever left on whatever you want. It won't make too much of a difference one way or the other. Once you get your decorations in, you're pretty much good to go. Now regarding the charms, here's the thing about charms in this game. God charms won't exist in any legit way in this game. Just getting a Wex 2 crit boost 2 is like 1 in 76 million. It's just not happening. For reference, your chance of getting an attack decoration on like 4 gold box investigations was like 1 in 500. And at best, the slots for god tier charms are level 3, 1, and 1. Because 3, 2, 1 only exists if you have no skills in A or S tier bracket, which are basically any of the good skills. So what you're going to be looking for is one skill you need with two points into it. I mean, some get three, but two points and a level two slot and maybe a level one just in case. You can chance meld for weakness exploit and try to fish for a Wex 2 charm, which would be the easiest thing to do and probably the most beneficial, to be honest. Now, all the only difference between like something with like Wex 2, a level two and a level one slot or just a Wex 2 level two slot and like God tier charm is like two ranks of crit boost or two normal up. That's not huge. It's the two normal up is like 10% big deal. You're turning your 50 damage a hit to 55. That's not going to make or break any of your runs. Unless you're doing like top tier speed runs, literally does not matter. So don't worry about it. There's nothing you really need in level three slots anyways. And the only thing we're going to be fitting in level ones is our elemental decos, which we should be able to fit in our armor anyway. So just meld for a weakness exploit charm. But if you get like a normal two, spread two, pierce two, something like that, Great, you can move some gear around. It's not that hard to get those. Just don't go crazy looking for non-existent charms. Trust me, it's not that big of a deal. I understand that the charm farming in this game is atrocious, but you really don't need much to get a good charm. Okay, so now that the gear's out of the way, let's talk about the switch skills, the silk binds, and our general bow play style. And let's do the switch skills first. The first is our power shot. Now we can either have power shot or absolute power shot. We all know what power shot is. It's our two shots that come out our combo end. It's two more plus one charge up to your cap. They don't do any more damage in this. So there's just two extra hits. Now the difference between this and absolute power shot is that absolutes get KO on the power shots, but at cost of extra stamina. Regular power shots cost 25 stamina while absolute costs 35, which is not insignificant. I'm personally not a fan of absolute power shot because stamina management is key for bow. So making every power shot in the entire hunt cost more stamina for the ability to get like one KO, not really a good trade in my eye. I forgot to mention that the KO is actually not a lot. You can get like one and that's all. It's not like a super quick KO. It's some KO, but I don't know the exact values yet. So while I do prefer the default power shot, there may be some niche situations, I guess, on monsters that are super weak to KO. You might be able to snag two KOs and it might be worth it. But for now, I'm just going with default. The next switch skill we have is our dodge, our slide, which we can change for bolt dodge. So our default dodge costs 25 stamina and gives us plus one charge on the slide and moves you a pretty good amount in the direction of your choice. It's just an evade. We all know this is how we dash dance and keep our charges up. But Bolt Dodge only costs 15 stamina, but it doesn't give you a charge on your slide. Instead though, it does like a dodge and it's kind of like a parry. It does like a melee slash. And if you parry something nearby, you will hit with your arrow and grant you plus two charge levels instead of plus one. However, it doesn't move you very much and it's not really good for repositioning. So it's actually really good on paper because the stamina cost is significantly better using this and getting the plus two is way better than getting a plus one, right? But I do have mixed feelings on this overall. I don't like not being able to reposition. It's way too important. And the parry is not like a guard point or anything. So you still get hit if you parry a monster charging through you or something with a lingering hitbox. So after getting hit constantly trying to use this skill as a guard point, I opted to just use normal dash instead. However, good old Titus recommended using a Vade Extender for bolt dodge. And I can say it's totally worth it. If you're running bolt dodge, put on a Vade Extender. I still don't care for bolt dodge, but at least with Evade Extender, I can use it to actually move, and then I can practice the parry a bit more. The stamina cost reduction is actually what's keeping me using it. But again, it's your choice really. I don't think it's a bad trade one way or the other. The slash it does isn't going to make or break your DPS at any point. It's just a little free extra damage, and it just looks stylish as shit. So. And let's go to the Silk Binds really quick. We can't change our Herculean Draw, which is just the slide that gives us more damage. It's only like 10% more and it costs two wire bugs to use. 
I don't use it at all. Don't worry about it, throw it away. I don't even have clips for it. Now we can replace our evade vault with an offensive aerial vault. This is key to bow and rise, and that's what we're gonna be using, and that's what we're gonna be spamming. Don't ever not use it. Let me break down just how insane this skill is. So it only costs one bug, and when you use it, you jump into the air and can fire up to three arrows and then stab down for a good chunk of damage too. Let's talk about being in the air. Obviously, you can use this to jump over monster attacks. Granted, some attacks have some pretty weird vertical hitboxes, so be careful. But you can also hold on to your shots and space them out in the air to prolong your air time so you can really control how long you remain airborne, which is pretty good. The other part is that using this retains the charge on your bow, so you can slide in rapid power, then jump into the air and shoot three more volleys at full charge. So we can basically replace dash dancing with this as long as we have bugs available as we don't need to spend stamina and time dashing between our shots. Now if that wasn't crazy enough, you can also recover some stamina while you have stamina surge up which is why it's highly recommended. There are also two small negatives though that I need to discuss, which is also determines why I use certain bows. First is that these aerial shots count as power shots. So if you're running absolute power shot, every shot in the air will gain KO, but also cost more stamina. So basically you're going to deplete all your stamina when you use this with absolute power shots. This is the main reason why I actually don't use absolute power shots. The other small gripe with this is that you get really high and when you want to abuse this the most is on a down monster that which usually means their head is on the floor so things like spread and pierce have some problems there spread are often out of critical distance and don't get full damage and pierce while working much better than spreads can lose ticks if the monster is on the floor and it just pierces head into the floor this is also why i really don't like using close range coats all that much they only reduce your critical distance by a small amount but it's been enough that there's plenty of times where I do the aerial attack and then my hit is not in critical distance, just barely. Now you should still use close range coats when you're out of power coats and just get good in position better. I'm just not quite there yet, but it's also why I really like Pierce because the added range Pierce has basically means I don't have any problems with the aerial attacks. I'm pretty much always going to be in range. So that's basically all the stuff we can change and have control over. Let's talk about our DPS rotation really quick. Now, if you've played bow and world, it's basically world bow plus aerial attack. We're going to be dash dancing on the ground while we have no bugs. And I also try to avoid using a regular shot, which is the second power shot. Its animation takes too long to recover. And since it has no added damage, it's not really worth using most of the time unless you need a stagger or you can't really reposition anyway. So you're basically just dash rapid power, dash rapid power, just like in world. Now, when you do get a good opening though, you want to use your aerial vault basically whenever you can, assuming you know you're not going to get hit because the three extra hits are really fast and it's a huge boost to your DPS. So make sure you're using that as much as possible. And when the monster's down, you're gonna wanna dash dance into rapid shot and the power shot and then go right into aerial, three more shots, stab down, rinse and repeat. So it's basically dash dancing with extra steps. This is also why I prefer the regular dodge over bolt dodge because it covers more ground. So when I get staggers and dunks, it's easier for me to get closer to the head and get good damage in on my aerial vaults. Now, Dragon Pierce is Dragon Pierce, we don't touch that. And that's basically all I wanted to cover. It was a lot to talk about. Uh, again, the meta is not super defined right now. Uh, the game is still new, so let's give it some time and check back in when we get our first set of new content. But this is kind of where Bo is right now. It's elemental stack, no real crit, lots of jumps, still basically world bow, but it's way better than people thought it was gonna be. It kicks ass and I knew it would. Demo bow, let's just be in demo bow, but we're much better off now. So thank you all for watching and good luck out there hunters and whatever you may be hunting.